In this clip, we'll see how you will be able to access your CASP scores and results via the CASP portal. From here, you're looking for the California Educator Reporting System, also known as SERS. Now, there's a couple ways to access this. The first is by which looking for the button that says California Educator Reporting System SERS, and you can click on this. It will redirect you for you to be able to see this screen. We're gonna click on this button here again, and it prompts us to log into our Tom's account. This is the same account that you use to be able to administer the assessment, okay? I'm gonna go back. The other option that you have is from here to click on where it says Smarter Balanced Interim Assessments, and then you still see that serves at the very bottom of your screen here. And this is the reporting system. Same thing, we're prompted to log into our Tom's account. I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're gonna sign in there. And we'll be using a, a demo account. So any of these student information that you see or any of the results is all fictitious. So I'm gonna go ahead and come over if we're acting as if we were an elementary teacher. Here we are in my elementary teacher account. One of the biggest things we wanna make sure that you're looking for is the school year. Please ensure that you are looking at the current year, whatever that happens to be. The next thing is that automatically you'll see here are assessments. Now these are the ones that are gonna be most often the most recent, that's the default. Now if you're wanting to see an assessment that is not popping up there, you can come to the button that says select assignments, assessments. From select assessments, these are all of the very many assessments in this sample that we've administered. Now, if you don't see as many options, those are only the ones that you've administered under the current testing year. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's say for example, if it was this particular assessment that I wanted to see the results of. So now I have both of these assessments showing and I only wanna look at the results from one. So I'm gonna click on the X right here for this assessment and now I'm only looking at these, this grade four math for operations FIV. Now I can see down here, as I scroll a little bit further, you're looking at the results. It tells you how many results you are looking for from this particular assessment. And you'll also notice that you'll be able to see all of these other little buttons. Now, what this would be reflecting of, and you may not see all of those, you may just see one, and that's because of those are the different times that you've administered. So let's say, for example, you started the test on today, and then tomorrow you came back and then finished up either with the same group of students or maybe a few students that were out. Those would be the different sessions that you've created all related to the same one test. So if you notice that, hey, I have more than 18 kiddos in my class, and I'm only seeing the 18 results. You could click on multiple buttons and you'll notice that that number jumped. This is going to be able to show us these are all of the very many times that I administered for this particular one. And you see as well the dates for administration. So what I wanna make sure you're aware is if you have a couple where you say, I'm missing some kiddos, select some of those other buttons of whatever the dates that you administered and you will notice that the number will grow so that you can incorporate all students. Now we're gonna come back and I'm not blurring any of these out because again, these are not actual results of students. These are fictitious, just as a sample. But a couple of things that I wanna point out is the ability that you have to see not only how did individual students perform, but kind of get to more zoomed out view. So these results by student. Now, if I came up here and I clicked on this dropdown, one of my things I really like to do is to look at the results by item. And I do this because I wanna be able to see which are the items that my students really struggled with so that I can try to be able to determine was it more so the way that it was presented to the students or was it the concept itself that my students had a challenging time with. So if you wanted to see, I can come over here, it tells us that 35% of the students were answering it incorrectly, 65% did. So you could always toggle either one of these, click simply at here. So now I'm looking at, okay, here's the ones, the assessment items that my students had a most difficult time with or, or potentially the ones that posed the least amount of challenge to them. So I can see here, this one right here down below, 35% of my class struggled with this particular item. So that would probably be the one that I really wanna focus on. And according to CASP, its item difficulty is moderate. Now I don't know what this item looked like, but I can come over here. And when I do that, it expands and I can see each student. I can be able to click on individual students to see how they performed. But what I really wanna make sure we look at is the item viewer. So this is gonna show me what was this item that my students had a challenging time with. So here we go, now I can look at the item itself and I might be able to determine, again, is it the concept that my students are struggling with or the way that it was presented to them? And of course, we could be able to do a reteach or spend some time going over this item if I felt it necessary. So that's it, that's how you're able to be able to look at not only individual students and their results by clicking on a student, 
what did they answer, right? But more so how to get a zoomed out view to be able to see how did my students perform as a whole on this assessment? Which items were they really successful and which items posed the most difficulty for them? All right, so now that's looking at from if you had one course, say we were looking at the secondary level, maybe middle school and or high school, where you teach multiple grade levels. If you're looking at the results right here and you're not seeing, for example, let's say I, I see seventh grade, but I'm not locating the other grade levels that I also teach. From this group drop down window, you can select it and you'd be able to select other grade levels you may be teaching. So let's say I'm also teaching in eighth grade. I'm gonna click on grade eight and it adjusts the assessment. Now remember, if you're not seeing the test that you want, it always defaults to most recent. You can come to select assessments and you will see all of the many assessments that you had administered. If you don't see as many as this sample here, again, that's only the ones that you've administered under the current year that you've selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's say for example, it was the grade eight reading and informational test. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to minimize this. I no longer want to see it. And I'm going to remove that summative one. So I'm going to click on this here. X. Now the only test that I'm seeing is the grade eight ELA reading informational text IEB. Now if I scroll down, as we said earlier, you're going to see the results here. They do always break it up into three parts, whether it be above, near, below. And remember, every time you look at this, this is for the different sessions that you've created. So if I go ahead and click on this one, that number grows because again, now I'm incorporating more students from that other session. And I could always come down and look on each individual kiddo, how they performed. You can click on any one of these columns and adjust what you're looking at. So I can go ahead and go from highest to lowest or lowest to highest. But my most favorite is by clicking on the results by item. And in doing so, that's where I could be able to see which items did they struggle the most on. So here I'm looking at 52% of my students incorrectly answered this one. Again, CASP lists it as a difficult item. You can click on the blue button here. You will see the results by individual student, or you can click on item viewer to quickly be able to determine what was the item that my students had a challenging time with. Was it either the concept that they struggled with or maybe the way it was presented here? So that's it. Now you know to be able to go to SIRS to access your results. And this is both for the IABs, FIABs, as well as the summative test data as well inside of CASP. If you have any questions, let us know.